guest right now and is in my showcase is Mr. Alan Parker, the director of the new picture, Mississippi Burning. Having seen this movie and having talked to people who also have seen it, they're all amazed at how well you have captured the time and place, Mississippi, 1964. You're not a southerner, you're not even an American. How did you go about reimagining, if you will, something that, of course, you didn't experience firsthand? Well, I never think of myself as um, being British anymore. I made eight films here, uh, and so I started to feel like maybe I am an American. But I look at it, America, differently to an American, perhaps, perhaps with a little more uh, clarity. Um, but I don't think it would be any different if I'd have come from New York. I would have had to look at those times and that place, and you do your homework. I read everything that was possibly been written on it. I saw every foot of newsreel uh, film, uh, and just really just absorbed every single thing that I could. In order, and then I spent a great deal of, of time in Mississippi, in order to to get it as accurate as possible. With all that research in your head, how was the Mississippi that you met? Um, they were fine. Yeah, they were very nice to me. Yeah, and to the whole of the unit. I mean, for a number of reasons. I mean, this is 24 years on from the events, so in a way they felt a little bit separate from it. Although some people that you met, not all, but some wished that we'd just swept it under the carpet and didn't bring it up again. But, uh, you know, it's a very depressed area there in Mississippi and in Alabama where we filmed. So I think that uh, they were quite pleased to see us because we were spending a lot of money. And they liked the, the sight of our movie dollars. So uh, they were very nice to us and they encouraged us to be there. I think you mean the, the governor welcomed you? The governor, he was governor-elect at the time, yeah. He uh, gave a lunch for us. I mean, he's a, he's a politician and he's very wary of us and, and he was very keen to point out that this was not the Mississippi of now or the Mississippi of the future, but the Mississippi of 24 years ago. And it's true, a great deal of, uh, uh, of change has occurred. Not enough, because there's not enough change uh, anywhere in the United States with regard to racial problems. But, um, yeah, I mean, he's, I think he's a very sincere man. I think it would be very good for for Mississippi and he was very gracious to have us to lunch to tell us uh, that we were welcome there but I think it was because we were spending all those millions of dollars <laughs> rather than the subject. You know something that brought home to me how things have changed in this country. There's one character who says that some things are worth dying for which of course echoes what Kennedy said ask not what your country can do for mm -hmm. you but what you can do for your country. Young people don't hear this kind of inspirational talk anymore. No. Is this why is there nothing to fuel social changes? Well, I think these things go in cycles, you know, it's true, last eight, ten years uh, there's been no kind of social sensibility whatsoever amongst young people. Um, but uh, I'm always optimistic that, uh, that these things will change, and films reflect that change. Uh, because, you know, the reason that the Hollywood film studios make movies is to it's because they think people will go and see them. Honestly. And uh, the reason they've made this is because they think people will go and see it, and therefore uh, maybe there is some sense of change in this country. Now, a picture like this will receive a lot of media attention. If Mississippi Burning had been released a couple of months ago, do you think that maybe that would have inspired or goaded, if you will, some non-voters to vote in the presidential election? Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. Because that is the point that is brought up. Yeah, I think that film is a very powerful medium, but I think it does things slowly, you know, I mean, it's... Uh, Maybe it would have been good for it to have happened and opened before. I don't think it would have made any difference to the election. I think it would have been foolish to think that. But, uh, you know, maybe if ten Mississippi burnings are made, then maybe we'll, people will be think rather differently about how, how valuable it is to exercise your vote. Mm. Uh, there was a quote I saw of you that I found rather intriguing. You said that you're the kind of director who needs villains. You're fueled by anger. Mm -hmm. and of course, watching your movies usually is like sitting on top of a volcano waiting for something to erupt. Why do you want to shake your audiences? I don't really want to shake them. I want to confront them and challenge them. I think the worst thing of all is for a movie to bore you or for a movie just to entertain you in such a light way that uh, when you leave the movie theatre that you have no thoughts and you don't even remember that you've seen the movie. I think film is much more important than that. I hate the trivialising of film that's happened in the last eight to ten years. And I think that uh, film should move you, should provoke you to thought, and involve you totally emotionally and viscerally. And uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But uh, 
it's not necessarily my job to make you feel comfortable sitting there in the cinema. I hope that when you've seen the film, you think, great, I'm really pleased that I've seen that film. But it doesn't mean to say that you're going to come out necessarily smiling all over your face. Film doesn't always have to do that. There should be a place for all kinds of films. This film is very exciting you know, in many ways. Uh, and you know, hopefully, because of that, it will reach a larger audience. But by reaching a larger audience, it will also try to educate them too. Mr. Parker, thank you so much for being with us here today. Thank you very much.